from Archbishop Spalding High School here in Severn, Maryland. It's time for our MIAA Game of the Week. And what a game it is with a regular season crown on the line as Spalding 5-0 in the league takes on the Gales of Mount St. Joseph's who come into today 4-1 in league play. And hello everyone, my name is Adam Pohl. Joined by Greg Serum and Greg, uh, we've got a big time matchup tonight. Tonight it's big because if it's real simple. If you win, if you win, you get that number one seed in the playoffs next week. That's going to be all the pressure on one game. And these two outstanding quarterbacks are going to tell the tale tonight. Tonight you got two of the best quarterbacks in the state. Let's go to Mount St. Joseph, Winston Watkins, 6'6", 230. The big lefty's going to throw the football everywhere on this field. He's got three wide receivers. He spreads it around. He needs to have a big game tonight. On the other side for Archbishop Spalding, you got the man, Malik Washington. He's only a junior, a legitimate four-star recruit. You know you're good when you get the Oregon Ducks flying all the way over from the West Coast to the city of Baltimore to see you play. He has a big game. Archbishop will be the number one seed. So a big, big game at hand here today. Here as Archbishop Spalding and Mount St. Joseph's get ready to play for a regular season crown in MIAA action. And Greg, it, it, it's a contest here today in which uh, obviously we talked about the quarterback battle. These two teams met a year ago. Spalding was trailing 14-0 early yep. against Mount St. Joseph's, but the Gales could not hang on. It's, it's going to be a matter. This is like we said in the beginning. It's, it's, this is a game of two big quarterbacks. Let's now listen in to our national anthem. rendition of our national anthem again the Cavaliers of Spalding taking on the Gales of Mount St. Joseph's and Greg this is a game that Spalding 5-0 coming into today in MIAA play at Mount St. Joseph's 4-1 uh, but the Gales are very hot coming into this contest yeah they're, they're, Mount St. Joseph's coming off five straight wins this team, I talked to the coach, talked to the players, they're coming in with a lot of confidence right now. They're going, they're coming in with five straight wins. It's gonna be, can they keep that momentum going through one more game? That's Donald Davis, head coach at Mount St. Joe's, and now a man that's built an incredible program here at Spalding, Kyle Schmidt. They were 21-2, and two, the Cavaliers, in the last two years coming into this season. They won their first MIAA championship a year ago, and a, a win against Mount St. Joe's would make them the number one seed going into this year's semifinals. I think the, the, the big key here is you need that number one seed. Loyola, who played both teams and played both teams very hard. No one wants to see them in the first round. You win this game, you get that number one seed. That's what makes this game huge. So it'll be Cooper Welch of Archbishop Spalding to kick it off as Mount St. Joe's will have it to get underway. Here we go. Great to have you with us for our MIAA game of the week. And it may be the regular season game of the year as the winner will be the one seed in the upcoming MIAA championship tournament. 
So for the Gales, they take to the field. We talked about him in our open, but what a an outstanding talent. The starting quarterback, Winston Watkins. He's not just a football <laughs> player, is he? He's also the star of their basketball team. You're talking about a quarterback, the senior, 6'6", 230, left-handed. He's got three wide receivers, Morgan, Youngbar, and Barnaby. He'll spread it all over the place. And a lot is expected to be put on his shoulders tonight, although a carry up the middle on the opening give of the game, and it's going to be a short gain as Zion Williams goes over the right side. It's it's going to be tough running this game. This is a very odd defense that you have right here for uh, Spalding, Archbishop Spalding. They they play a, basically a 3-3-5. Three, three, you don't see that a lot in high school. Three down linemen, three linebackers, and you get those five quasi-defensive backs. And you can see them sneaking into the box right now. Is back into the shotgun. Here is Watkins. And he's going to roll out, looking for Daylon, and a beautiful on-target throw as he connects with the senior receiver, Dennis Morgan. And let's see, it appears that it's going to be very close to the first down marker. It's going to be third down and about two here for the Gales. And, and Morgan leads this team in receiving. This is the guy, that he's. He, I think you're going to see a lot of these quick outs, you know, five, ten yards, try to control the ball. Mount St. Joe's, can they can control this football? They keep Watkins off the field. Morgan had 103 yards receiving with a touchdown in Mount St. Joe's win a week ago. Here comes the blitz, and the throw is sailed high, and it's going to be fourth down from well within their own territory. So that second down pass, it looked like Morgan maybe had a chance to try to turn it up field a bit. He went out of bounds, and now it is going to be a punt right out of the gate for the visitors. That's exactly what you didn't want to happen. You know, Monte Joseph needs to control this ball. They get a three and out. Uh, now you get Malik Washington on the field, and it looks like they're going to have good field position. Oh, the big leg of A.J. Korkach ready to... Send it away, the snap, here comes the block, and oh a great goodness. push up the middle, and a big start for Spalding. Oh. Right up the gut was Eli Best. He blocks the punt and takes it in for the score. A special team score less than a minute into the contest. And that's a dagger right off the bat. With five straight wins, Monte Sosa's had all this momentum coming into the game to have that go you know, the punt being blocked right off the bat, Spalding scores. That's a tough blow to come off late. What a big, big play. Spalding is coming off of a bit of a lethargic game. They turned the ball over three times, but did win dramatically in overtime against Loyola Blankfield a week ago as the extra point won a boot. It is up and good, and it's a big, big start for the home side. A special team score, and Spalding is on top, seven to nothing. And you could see untouched there was Eli Best as he ran through the middle. And I don't think there was really anything that the Gales could do, their punter, Korkosh, had no to get chance. That he had away. no chance. That was a breakdown up front. And that is exactly what Mount St. Joseph's did not want right off the bat. Remember last year, Mount St. Joseph's in this matchup, they got off to a great start. They were up 14-0 early before Spalding got it going and outscored them 35-7 for the remainder of the game. So today, the shoe's going to have to be on the other foot here for the Gales. Again, the winner of this one is going to be the one seed in the upcoming MIA championships. Four teams will advance. And both these teams, Greg, do know that they will be at home next week. They're going to be the one and two seeds in the upcoming tournament. They know they're going to be in a tournament. You want that one seed. That's what you're looking for. As here comes a return here from Mount St. Joe's and getting it out just out to around the 19-yard line there for the Gales was Zion Williams before he's met by a bevy of tacklers in the red and white of Spalding. I think right now you're gonna have, if, if, if you're on the side for Monte and Josephs, you gotta let Watt, you gotta let the big kid Watkins throw the ball on first down. I don't think they're gonna be able to run on this defense. Watkins is gonna have to spread the ball around, get second and three, third and two, keep it manageable. Don't let this defense get off. 
Watkins was one for two throwing on the opening possession of the game, but obviously the Gales need a little bit of rhythm. We're less than a minute in. Smalling's on top, seven to nothing. And the blitz is on the head of up the middle, and what a rush coming by Key Sean Flowers. The senior linebacker was there to make the tackle in the backfield. Key Sean Flowers, a big time. He's a, he's going. He's a Maryland recruit, big time senior kid. He's a he's a man you should watch for. Austin Lewis on the carry. Mount St. Joe's is a team that does not just rely on one running back. They'll literally, I mean, they had eight guys run the football last week in their win. But this is, again, second and 12. He's got a throw. Quick out and a nice throw. It's complete, and it will set up a third down and manageable as Nick Barnabé with the reception, the junior near the sideline, taking it out of bounds, and it'll be third down and five, a big opportunity here for the Gales as they rush up to the line. Yeah, Gales going up tempo, which I like. I think this is a good part for them. Let's see if Watkins can deliver. Well, it's shown here by Archbishop Spaulding, and with time to operate, Watkins will look back towards the sideline to see if they want to make a change. They do run these heavy wide receiver sets. As Watkins takes the snap, one step throws, caught near the first down, I think he's and got they it. got it. That quick game is going to be big here for Mount St. Joe's today. Dennis Morgan with his second catch Dennis already Morgan's, of the night. Dennis Morgan's the man. That, that's the guy. You try to get him the ball as best he can. He reaches out, just gets the first down. A nice throw, though, by Watkins. That was all timing. And you have to like how he's getting it out of his hands so quickly. Quickly. He's not going to let this defense get a rush on him. I'm looking at those five or ten yard slants, maybe the whole game. The Watkins has been in the shotgun here throughout, out of the gate. Still early on in the opening quarter. And the give up the middle. And a little bit of room to operate. As again, it is Austin Lewis breaking through the middle for a three or four yard gain. It's just tough to run against this but they, you know, this 3-3-5, three, three, and what, what they'll do for Archbishop, the two guys that they call the hybrid, Trent Gillis, Eli Jones, they'll some come up and play four, sometimes they'll move back for a defensive back. They move these two hybrid kids all over the field. It gives you a lot of different looks. Boy, that is tough, tough to decipher for a quarterback like Watkins, who's in the shotgun. Takes a snap, he's gonna give it again. Oh. But uh, right there, Zion Williams, the tailback, had nowhere to operate, and it's gonna be a loss of about four yards. And again, Flowers blitzing. This time he's at a middle linebacker, blitzed right up the gut to make stuff that whole package in there. That's why that kid's a D1 recruit. And another great play as well. McVicker was there, the nose tackle also, with immediate pressure. So now it's third down and long. Greg was talking about how the Gales had to stay out of uh, these situations. A late blitz, long throw over the middle, leaping oh. attempt, but it's through the hands of Barnabé. He maybe left his feet a bit early, incomplete, and it'll be fourth down for Mount St. Joseph. Well, they made it, got a couple first downs. That was a good play. They found the little soft spot right in the middle there, just off his hands, just off his hands, a little high from Winston Watkins, but once again, they're punting and they're gonna give Archbishop great field position. Tyler Brown on the coverage for Archbishop Spaulding, who looked like they're looking to blitz again. Snap a bit high, and this time the Gales get it away, a high kick. Fair catch, called for and taken at the 39 yard line. And now we've got some physicality mm -hmm. after the play, and flags are flying here at Spaulding. There's no question you're going to get a personal foul here. Now well, let's see. This could really aid the field position of the Cavaliers on what will be their opening offensive possession of the game. A block kick leading to the opening score for Spalding on top 7-0 here midway through the opening quarter. And a conversation taking place. It's a big conversation taking place. There was a lot of players involved here. I think this is going to go against Mont St. Joseph's. It was well away from the fair catch as well. It was it, it just, just a stupid penalty. You can't do that in a big game like this. You just can't make those mistakes. And you're right, Greg. It is a 15-yard penalty against Mount St. Joseph's. And you can see after the fair catch... <laughs> as that was unquestionably called against Tremar Hilton, the junior. 
Kind of the gunner there coming down the near side of the field. And it's the old adage, it's always the second guy that gets caught, he got caught. And they're going to move this thing all the way into positive territory, plus territory for Spalding, the 46 yard line of the Gales, make that the 45. And now for a first time in the game already with a 7-0 lead, Malik Washington, the highly touted four-star junior quarterback, will go to work. Let's see if they throw the ball or give it to Curtis. And it's the carry right up the middle and room to room into the secondary and near first down yardage as a great run for Caden Curtis. That's the man right there. Caden Curtis had a big game last week. He's a talented running back. There he goes again. They're going to establish a run game here. And they do so quickly. And it's going to be a first down for Spalding. Curtis last week, 25 carries at 184 yards in the overtime win. And that's the big difference between the two teams. Spalding has a running game. They have a guy in Curtis that they can offset Malik Washington. Not the same for Mount St. Joseph's. Third straight carry for Curtis up the gut to open the offensive night for the Cavaliers. And this time a short game. Well, they're already approaching field goal range. Here is Archbishop Spalding looking to really take control of this contest early. They're talking about Caden Curtis. He's a senior, averaging about 85 yards a game, but more importantly, six yards per carry average. That's phenomenal. Washington is shotgun. This will be his first passing attempt. Let's it go, and it's complete. Shy of the yardage marker to make. It'll be third down and about two as R.J. Newton, one of those outstanding senior offensive producers, gets his first catch of the night. R.J. Newton, Igbabwe, and Kaufman, three targets for Washington. Could be four down territory here with fourth down and about two inside, or check that third down and about two I here like from about the 26 yard line. I look him to give it to Curtis again, see if they get some yards. No, quick pass. The screen to Newsom. He's got the first down and more on the run down the sideline. And it's going to be first down and goal to go for Spalding. The quick pass, big out of the game. Big out of the game. Good blocking by the, all the wide receivers out there. Gives RJ that little bit of step and he makes it pay. And here we go to see if they can score again. And I think it is first down and goals. We've got a whistle. And a timeout on the field. And we will take a break as Mount St. Joseph's Colts time. It's seven, nothing Spalding. We're back with more right after this. We have an opportunity to do well academically. I still remember my first day. You're going to grow so much. You're going to be prepared for success in college and in life. You will find a deepened faith. Become a leader. You're going to be pushed more than you ever have been before. It's going to be difficult. And this community will help you. Help you become the best version of yourself. You're about to have some of the best days of your lives here. And when you look back, you will realize you were always part of something bigger. Whittlesfield here in Severn, Maryland, home of Archbishop Spalding. They're looking to wrap up an undefeated regular season in MIAA play. And they've got a 7 0 lead early on and first down and goal here against the Gales of Mount St. Joseph. Washington is in the shotgun. Looking for a run. And they're going to give it right up the middle. And a good first down carry by Caden Curtis who has had room to operate on this opening drive up the middle. It is, it, it, there's no question about it. Spalding's one has established that run game. Later on, it'll open it up for Malik Washington to throw the ball. If they don't have to throw, they're gonna put up points after points with Caden Curtis. And right now, Spalding has been that more physical team up front on both sides of the ball. As again, now Washington's gonna come under center, second down and goal. He's going to roll to his right, looking, fires into the end zone, and caught. It is a touchdown. Aaron Igwebe with a catch 
the sophomore brings it into the back of the end zone and Spalding with a two score lead here midway through the opening quarter. A beautiful play by Washington, T takes the snap, you think he may just roll out, is he gonna run, is he gonna run? He's patient, he's patient, and there's the man, Guibwe, he returns, punts, he does the kickoff, you put the ball in his hand, good things will happen. Beautiful touch on that throw as the extra point is up and it is good. And it's a 14-0 lead for Spalding now seven or so minutes into this game. Couldn't have been a better start for Spalding. They come right out. Again, we talked about Mount St. Joseph's having a lot of momentum, five straight wins. They come out here and they fall down 14 right off the bat. That's letting the air out of the tires. It's also big, I think, for head coach Kyle Schmidt because they weren't very happy with how they performed in their win in overtime last week against Loyola Blakefield. Again, they had three turnovers in the game. They had 150 yards in assessed penalties. It wasn't the cleanest game in that road win. No, they were fortunate to get that road win last week to set themselves up for the. This is a much better opening start for Spalding, and I'm sure they were talking about it all during practice this last week. Well, let's see what the Gales of Mount St. Joseph's do now as uh, Mount St. Joe's, they are a program that, I mean, they have had an outstanding season. They are seven and three, four and one in league play. And frankly, they haven't been down two scores all that often. As here's the return. And tackled shy of the 20 yard line are the Gales. And that's where they'll take over with what is their third possession of the game and field position has not been on their oh, yeah. side. Monte Joseph has not started above the 20 in three straight possessions here. They've got to put together some nice passes. They've got to get three, four, five first downs in a row here. Give their defense a little time to rest. This now falls on the, the big kid, Winston Watkins. He's got to perform right now. He threw for 237 yards and two scores a week ago in the win against Pilate. Has a nice out pattern throw there and a good first down gainer for the Gales. As a connection made there to Peyton Youngbar. And that, this is what we're looking at. Two stop, two drops, step back, boom. Get it out of your hands real quick. Pick up five yards, much more man. You got a second and five now. Now you go right back to the pass. Watkins as uh, the clock is bleeding down, getting the play call. They were rushing up to the line in that no huddle early on, taking a little bit more time this time through. As he looks to pass again, the blitz coming, the center of the screen right up the middle, and it's gonna be a first down for Mount St. Joseph. A nice play calling right there. Archibald coming off, Spalding just dominating up front. Everybody was free. You get a rush like that, you throw a screen, the perfect play was called. And Zion Williams with a nice run up the middle and he really lowered his head and powered his way forward to get the first down yardage. The second first down of the game for Mount St. Joseph. Just what Mount St. Joseph needed. Pressure here and on the run, a nice carry by Watkins as he makes something out of nothing. Like when Watkins gets a chance, you're talking about a kid that's 6'6", 230, He's going to be a handful when he gets outside that pocket. I think he needs to do that a little bit more to keep this defense off of him. Yeah, the rush has been tough to deal with. The short passing game has had some success for the Gales at times early on. As they try to get aligned in motion now is uh, Davon Bird. And now a handoff to the wide receiver as coming across the formation was the sophomore, Alan Gillis. And there's Flowers again. He's everywhere. That young man is playing everywhere. I think they're going to throw a run in just to keep him honest, but it's going to be win or loss with that pass. Yeah, the size and athletic ability of Flowers. Flowers just reads the play, sees it the whole way, and they come up. And again, you're third down in about five. It's pass all the way here. Yeah, this has been a consistent start here. Third down of the blitz is on the throw. Oh, for the middle, complete a big gainer for the Gales. And they hit Gillis, the sophomore receiver, right down the seam. It's the same play they did the last play. They found an opening in the middle of that field. This one was right on target. The last one was a little high. This time Watkins hit it. 
First time into Spalding territory. And now Gills is gonna have another look at it on a quick screen, but no room to operate. Now Gillis with the big gainer, and there a loss of a yard as you see the quick screen. They're playing man-to-man, -man. the quick screens I don't think are gonna be able to, when you do that man-to-man, -man, they're coming up, they're being very aggressive on the outside. And Keon Flowers was there to make that open field tackle. A second down and long, about 12 to go here for the Gales. Now you got Morgan down here in the field, one-on-one, -on -one. let's see if they go to him. Watkins is on the run again, and he is taken down. He wasn't looking to slide there, and it's going to be third down and about eight. Spalding did a nice job. I think what they're doing now with the hybrid guys, they're keeping two of them, and they're going to just spy on Watkins. They're not going to let him have that open field. Watkins barking out orders as they quickly rush to the line. A big drive for the Gales, down 14-0 early. Here comes the blitz, it's gonna be a handoff on a draw. Nothing doing for Zion Williams. There was nothing there. They, they, the defense was all, all, all over that. And you're thinking if you get four or five yards there, you might go for it, right, in that part of the field. But with the loss of yardage, an outstanding tackle made there by Justin Snell. It is another punt, the third of the evening here for Mount St. Joe's. If you're looking for some positive, Mount St. Joe's have picked up three first downs. They flipped the field. Now they can pin Spalding back inside the 10 with a good punt. Able to flip the field. And now let's see if Korkoch can get it away. Good snap, and he does so. And this punt is going to be taken to the 15-yard line. Room to roam, though, on the return as Higuibe. There is a flag down. Now a second flag down the near side. He stepped out of bounds. But an outstanding return, and we'll have to see if it comes back. That play is going to come back. I could see the first flag definitely is coming back. Igbabwe, when he puts his hands on the ball, good things happen. This guy can fly. What an electric young player. Hard to believe he is just in his sophomore season. We'll see there's two flags on the play. Let's see if they offset, but I'll, the, the one is definitely on Spalding. And it's gonna be first down as we see right here at the 35, and there's the block in the back. On the near side of the field. And this is going to move Archbishop Spaulding back to about, I believe, their own 25-yard line. So a first time that the Cavaliers are going to have to go and work from well inside their own territory. Let's see if the Cavaliers go to the run game now. You're back inside here, inside right at the 25. They got them. They got a big time in Caden Curtis. I think it's time to pound the rock a little bit and see if they can get out of here. It's a big start for the Cavaliers on their senior day here in Severn. As Washington takes the snap and he's gonna give it right up the middle. And it looked like tripping there as he approached the line was Caden Curtis. Yeah, he lost his footing right there. There was no hole there at all. He did lose his footing a little bit on that one. No gain, it'll be second down and 10. Defensive front for Monte St. Joseph's got to pick it up right here. They may be changing the play call here at the line of scrimmage, time in which to operate as Washington gives the audible and now takes the snap, looking for a quick throw, and it is caught. Great job, the tiptoe on the sideline there. Iguabe again. Actually, it was Dom Buanasisi. And he was able to tiptoe that line. Look at this catch. I think it got tipped at it the line of scrimmage. It got tipped at the line of scrimmage. Kept his eyes right on the football. So third down and about four here for Spalding. Down St. Joe's looking for a big stop as time is ticking down in this first quarter. It's going to be a throw to the side, and it's enough to move the chains. First down. As Boo and CC. Makes the play. Go right back to him. They needed three yards, do a three yard quick slant, and they got the three yards. That was a bullet from Malik Washington. 
And it's so important to get that out on those quick throws and get it into the hands of your wide receivers immediately. And they did just that as the clock's ticking down, and that will be the end of the opening quarter. So a big start for Spalding on top, 14 to nothing now, a quarter in. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll return with more. This is the MIAA Game of the Week, 14 nothing Spalding, a quarter in. so much you're going to be prepared for success in college and in life you will find a deepened faith become a leader you're going to be pushed more than you ever have been before it's going to be difficult and this community will help you help you become the best version of yourself you're about to have some of the best days of your lives here and when you look back you will realize you were always part of something bigger Mount St. Joseph is a place where you belong to a lifelong brotherhood. Believe in yourself and have teachers who believe in you. Become the man you were made to be. Register for Open House at msjnet.edu slash open house. 14-0, Archbishop Spalding in front and with the football first down as we open the second quarter. Alongside Greg Sir, my name is Adam Pohl. Great to have you with us for our MIAA Game of the Week here on YouTube as here's the handoff and a great carry around the right side. Again, Curtis has been the bell cow. He, every time he gets the ball, again, he's averaging close to six yards a carry. If you can get him going, it's going to be an easy time for Archbishop. Now you talk about Mount St. Joseph trying to get in second and third down and manageable, and that is where Spalding has been in their short time with the ball today. Here's another screen throw and an outstanding tackle on the edge made off of the screen there. What a play. Nice play. It was a man to man coverage came up very quickly. Angelo Ross, the junior, stuck. nice tackle, soft hit, hit. They pick up zero yards on that. Third down and five. He beat the blocker and made the open field tackle. And now it is third down. As coming in motion is Iguibe. The Gales looking to force a first punt of the game. Play action pass, rolling left, in trouble. Washington trying to find daylight, rolling right throws. And a diving catch, what an outstanding play. Off schedule, Washington makes it happen. Curtis Katie's reels Curtis. it in. Comes out of nowhere. There's Washington showing his athletic ability. I thought he was just going to throw the ball away at the last minute. Scrambling, scrambling at the last minute. He sees Caden Curtis right on target. And a first down, and now Curtis with a big run up the middle as he breaks through the line for a gain of about seven on first down. Spalding has it going right now through the air, on the ground. They're moving the ball constantly. They pick up another score. They go up by 21. It's going to be a tough haul for Mount St. Joseph. That was a big, big play. That scramble and throw. It looked like the Gales might get off the field there. As now on second and short, another screen. And Aguibe's Bay's got more of the run down the near sideline and inside the 20 yard line for a first down for the Cavaliers. They said it'll be sooner or later, Mount St. Joseph's gonna have to double team Aaron Aguibe. You can't let him, he's in motion, he's got one on one, and he's beating his man every time. Great Good lead play. blocking there from the wide receivers as here's the handoff. And coming to the left side again is Curtis, who has been the ball carrier every time that Archbishop Spalding has uh, ran the football here today a quarter in. Caden's got to be at that five yards per carry mark right off the bat. He's just every place there's been holes, and he's making the yard after he gets hit. Second down and about five to go. Blitz coming from the outside. All right, it looks like we're gonna get a flag. It's coming across was Corday Bethel of the Gales, the safety. 
That's a five yard penalty and it'll set up second down and short from the 10 yard line and a chance again for a three score lead here for Spalding who are making a statement early on in this final regular season game of the year. Mont St. Joseph's got to suck it up right here and maybe try to hold them to a field goal. They score here, this is going to be a tough road for Mont St. Joseph. Early second quarter on this second and short. And here comes the handoff right up the middle as uh, lunging forward is Caden Curtis. It's first down and goal. And Curtis right back to the right side of Washington. Give it to him again. And there he is up the middle for a touchdown. Right up the middle, he was untouched. The big guys up front for Spalding are starting to make some holes. The pace of the Cavaliers paying dividends and it's a 20 to nothing lead here for Spalding. You can see right here, Caden, he does not get touched. A big, just a trap play straight up the middle. The front seven for Spalding are controlling the game right now. A dominant effort in the early going is Cooper Welch out for the point after attempt. And he's gonna put it through and it is a 21-0 Spalding lead. Uh, Archbishop Spalding on this senior day. They wanted to come out and have a great start. It's just what they've done. Just what they've done. They've done it on the air. They've done it on the ground. They have good combinations. It's just a very good running attack, passing attack. There's nothing right now that they cannot do. And they blocked the kick in the first minute of the game for a special team score as well. And it really did set the tone, did it not? They set the tone within the first minute of that game, and it's been all Archbishop Spalding. 21 to nothing. Mount St. Joseph's and their quarterback, Winston Watkins, they're going to have their hands full right now. Now the winner of this game will be the one seed, but the loser will be the two seed. So both these teams will host a semifinal game next week. The winner is going to take on Loyola Blakefield. And uh, Archbishop Spalding beat them in overtime last week as this kickoff is going to head. Went out, out of bounds. Of bounds we may have had, well, we got a whistle. We got a flag before the kick. And Spalding was offsides on the kickoff. And on the other side of things, it is McDonough who will be the three seed, and they will await the loser of this game. And that's just a big, it's just a big difference between being that number one seed and being that number two seed and having to play Loyola. Well, it's only five yards, but now they're going to move it from the 40 to the 35, where Spalding will kick it off. Let's see if Mount St. Joe's is able to get better field position due to that here off of this kick down 21 nothing with 943 to play in the second quarter as we stated that amount st joseph have not started a series above their 20 yard line they have got to get good field position here here's deshaun womack with a return cutting it right up the middle looking for the near side he's going to get it out just past the 30 yard line and that will be the best field position so far for the gales tonight winston watkins he's going to start he's going to have the big left he's going to have to have his arm all geared up and he's going to have to throw the ball i think almost every down right now that's tricky when you get into a situation like that early in a contest where you're trying to dig out of a hole there's still a lot of time to play. We haven't seen the deep ball from Watkins yet. That's what we're looking for. He's throwing the outs, five yards. They've hit a couple over the middle for 15, 20 yards. Let's see if he goes deep. Let's see if he can stretch it. Well, you see many of these four receiver sets in the early going as a low snap taken. And over the middle, a connection made for a Gales first down, a gain of more than 15 yards as well, it is the tight end and punter, A.J. Korkosh, who makes the reception. And he's a big, you're talking to kid 6'6". Six, six. Korkosh can catch the ball, particularly over the middle. It's a huge target for Winston. Great job to receive it and quickly turn up field. Good yards after the catch there. As the Gales look to move into field position of Archbishop Spaulding for a first time or a second time tonight. But again, no room in which to run. Zion Williams is getting hit as soon as he touches the football. He's feeling some pressure up there. That defense, again, you don't see too many schools at this level play that 3-3-5 look. And it's given, I think, 
up front. Mount St. Joseph's offensive lineman just confused right now. Uh, Gales are having to get it to the perimeter quickly to do damage here tonight. As Watkins takes a snap, free rusher, and he finds his tight end again. What a great throw with immediate pressure, and it's going to be a first or third down and short now here for the Gales. Watkins has been under pressure the whole game. You can see right here, there's, they're blitzing, they're coming in. He, got, he had a helmet right in his chest, threw a bullet, threw a bullet. Justin Snell was untouched coming in off the side, and Watkins was able to get rid of it, third down and one. And they're going to give up the middle first down for the Gales and more. A sneaky run there from Zion Williams. Finally, a hole for Williams. That's what you need a little bit. You can't throw the ball every time. Zion Williams sees a hole, seven yards. Now we're talking. And he really showed his quick feet there. As first down and 10 for the Gales at the 37 of Spalding. Let's see if Watkins goes back over that middle and finds that soft spot in the middle. Watkins looking, pressure coming, fires and caught again. And the man of the drive has been Korkot, the tight end, his third catch over the middle of this drive. They, they found the soft spot and they're looking for it. Korkot is a short man in, three steps, turns around, balls right on him. Boy, Watkins has done a very good job tonight of getting rid of the football quickly. And at times he has had immediate pressure. Well, he's done a good job. As it is now second down and about six to go. Let's see if they can get Dennis Morgan into the play game right here. Another blitz. Pass there he is. Caught. Here's Morgan breaking into the secondary inside the 15-yard line. First down, Mount St. Joseph. He saw right there. Watkins saw Morgan have one-on-one -on -one coverage. He did a quick turn in, quick post pattern. Beautiful throw by Watkins. Almost looked like he put a little bit extra on that. Yeah, that was zipped. So first down, first time in the red zone for the Gales tonight. They need a touchdown badly. Pressure immediately. Watkins, Watkins rolls left and gets rid of it. Kind of just threw it away. Nobody opened at that time. Just that was a good play by Watkins. They have found something, Mount St. Joseph, in the middle of that field that they're utilizing. I think that's what they got to go right to right now. Well, sometimes an incompletion is a good play, and that might have been the case right there. Instead of taking the big loss and putting you well behind the chains. Second down and 10 as the Gales try to get back into this game that has been dominated by the home side and Spalding throughout in the early going. Watkins with pressure. He eludes it. He's on the run. Can he turn the corner? And he's tripped up from behind. An outstanding play. And again, it's key Sean Flowers. He just keep saying his name. He doesn't make that play. I think Watkins might score right on the shoe strips. Right now third down and eight. And you got to wonder if they're unable to pick this up. If you're in four down territory, you're definitely in a spot where you could kick a field goal here would be around a 30 yarder from this spot if you have an incomplete pass. So third down and eight as the Gales look to break through. Trips to the wide side, look for Morgan. Throw is low caught and a first down for Mount St. Joe's. What an outstanding play and it is uh, Davon Bird to Bird. make the catch. They put three wide receivers out. Bird is the one that goes out wide, makes a good catch. The ball is a little low. Good catch by Bird. Austin Lewis has come in as the tailback. Right behind Watkins. He's going to get the football. Barrels his way forward. Is he in? That it's looks close. Like it's touched. And we will see. And he's going to be just short. It'll be second down and goal inches from the goal line. Now, for me, for perspective, you might think, Joe, if you're inches away and you got a quarterback that's 6'6", 250, <laughs> I know what I'm calling. Yes, he is. Watkins in the shotgun. Let's see. Watkins hands it off again and short. Denied a loss of yardage this time. Zion Williams with a carry. It'll be third down and goal. That was not a pretty handoff. That almost was a fumble right there. A little miscommunication. Zion Williams got the ball way in the back. He's lucky he carried that ball. He's lucky he didn't fumble. The front of this defensive line of Spalding 
has been one of the big pieces of this game here early on. Their immediate pressure, their ability to stop the run, and now trying for a goal line stand, third down, and there's a fumble on the snap, and it's gonna be a loss of yardage for the Gales. Again, it's trouble with up the front. You got a kid, Winston Watkins, get him the ball. He's got to just push it up front. He looks like it was going to be a quarterback sneak. Fumbled the snap. He's never under center. He was there, and he could not handle the snap. And it looks like the field goal team is coming on and fourth and goal from the four-yard line. It'll be about a 21-yard field goal here as Mount St. Joseph looks to get on the board. The field goal is up and it is good. And the Gales get on the board on the kick there from Greg Roman. Well, at least they did some good thing. That was a 70 yard drive. They started at their 30. Some good passes along the way. They got they got Zion Williams started at the running back. I personally would have went for it when you're down. But a very good, a very good drive. Got some positive points. And Roman was the holder. Check that. Adam King with the field goal. King made both field goals last week in Mount St. Joseph in their victory against Pilate. Fans, we'd like to let you know that the championship games of MIAA football, Sunday, November 19th, at Johnny United Stadium. That is at Towson. University. The B Championship game will be at 2 p.m. Of course, these two schools trying to play in the A Championship game that will be at 5 p.m. Tickets are available at MIAA slash championships.com. Once again, MIAA championships.com. Only $15 for students. 21 to 3 is our score but a big stop there for Spalding. A big stop for Spalding. The big thing was like we said a 70 yard drive got positive points. So it's something to build on. A chance for a return here from the seven yard line as coming up the middle is Ledbetter and Ledbetter fights his way forward past the 30 and pretty good field position right out of the gate for the Cavaliers again. That's number 20 Antonio Ledbetter the Ledbetter brothers that are playing for Spalding. Antonio being the running back. David Ledbetter, a freshman wide receiver. Both talented kids. Now, this is a big drive here. 335 to play. Second quarter. Remember, Spalding will get the football to start the second half. And Mount St. Joe's, they need a quick stop to try to get the ball back and do a little bit more damage to get back into this game. Defense has got to step up right here. As there's the carry up the middle. And it is positive yardage. On the run up the middle. Again, Caden Curtis on the carry. And I think it was Sean Curtis of Mount St. Joseph who made that nice tackle. They've got the defense has got to start playing the big guys up front. They're playing that big for the nose tackle to both, both defensive guards. Got to come through right here, especially with Curtis. And here's the Curtis carry again, but it's going to be third down. And five or six now, and a big spot for the Gales defense trying to get their first stop of the game and get their offense a chance to chip away late in the first half. Third down and about seven to go. Mason Williams is the big stud up front there for Mont St. Joseph. He's got to start playing that big game. Him and Sean Curtis control that middle. Pressure, here's the long throw down the sideline and incomplete. It was close. Newton had a step. He made the catch, but he could not get a foot down. A beautiful pass by Malik Watkins. Let's watch a replay. I thought he was in. You only have to have one foot in. And, oh, that toe may have just been on the sideline. We're talking uh, toe just hit that, just hit the white. An outstanding throw by Washington. And now a timeout by the Gales, their second, actually first call here. We're gonna take a quick break. It's 21 to three, Spalding in front, as this is MIAA football. I still remember my first day. You're gonna grow so much. You're going to be prepared for success in college and in life. 
you will find a deepened faith. Become a leader. You're going to be pushed more than you ever have been before. It's going to be difficult. And this community will help you. Help you become the best version of yourself. You're about to have some of the best days of your lives here. And when you look back, you will realize you were always part of something bigger. Archbishop Spalding on top, 21 to three, late first half, but the Gales have gotten their first stop. Yeah, now this is a big, big spot for Mount St. Joseph. Got the stop they needed, let's see if they can capitalize. They tried to pressure the kick, it's away, and a fair catch taken at the 31 yard line. As reeling it in was Greg Roman, and now the Gales will go to work. They nearly converted a touchdown on their Last drive, they got it inside the one, but they could not score. They had four or five first downs, drove the ball 70 yards, got stopped at the end there, but they got the running game going a little bit. Maybe that's what they need. If they can get Zion Williams getting the ball a little bit, let's see if they're going to go back to Zion Williams or look for that opening that there seems to be right over the middle for the Spalding defense. So 225 remains in this first half. Now Mount St. Joseph, they have called two timeouts already. So they only have one remaining. So as this drive continues, the clock could be in play if the Gales are able to move it. And Watkins tries to do so, he's gonna hand it off. Barnaby. And Barnaby again going sideline to sideline but couldn't get it going east to west. No, a little bit of trickery there, Game trying to keep, the trying to keep Mont St. Joseph to see if they, trying to get a little bit of the running game going. They've got to keep him honest. But now you got to put the ball in the air. Second time we've seen a sweep of that nature for a wide receiver today for the Gales, who have done best offensively when they have worked the perimeters. As here's a long throw from Watkins. There's a flag down, and oh, what a catch! Oh, Morgan! Almost, it goes oh. away. Dennis Morgan got his hands on it. He could not reel it in, but there is a flag, and it's going to be a holding call against the Gales. A holding call. There it is, Dennis Morgan. We finally see the big, the big lefty Winston Watkins throwing the ball deep. I think they need to do that a little more often. So they're going to decline the holding penalty, and that'll make it third down at about eight here with 146 to play. Let's take a look. Ever so close this. What a job to get his hands on it for Morgan, but the ball came loose when he hit the ground. Beautiful pass by Watkins. That's 60 yards in the air on target. So instead of second and 18, it's going to be third down and eight here. This an opportunity for Spalding to get the ball back. They still have three timeouts remaining. I'm looking for something over the middle. Here's the throw, and it's complete. Breaking a tackle, diving for first down yardage. Do the Gales get enough on an outstanding effort by Peyton Youngbar? First time they look for Youngbar. Did they get it? It's going to be fourth down and about a half a yard. They got to go. They got to go. And the clock is running here. 123 and moving. And it looks like the offense is going to stay on the field. What do you think? I like this call. You got to go. Let's see if they're going to try to draw them offside. That's the big thing. They might try to draw them offside here. Watkins now comes under center. Look at the rush forward. And he he got it. Sneak. And there's a flag. And let's see. Spalding was offside, and that'll move the chains right there. Now a lot of clock came off there. 103 now remaining, and again, the Gales have just one timeout here to work with. You saw as soon as Watkins moved under center, everybody from Spalding got excited. They knew what was coming. <laughs> Somebody got a little too excited. That's what they should have done when they had the play down there at the goal line, just like that. Now Watkins back in the shotgun, trying let's to move the Gales quickly down the field here. Let's see if he goes deep. Only rushing three, and an interception as the throw a bit too high, and Tyler Brown with a diving pick for Spalding. Uh, Watkins' first mistake. Left his hands a little high, the ball floated on him just over the outstretched hand of his intended receiver. What an outstanding interception. 
Well, 58 seconds now in which to operate for the Cavaliers. Let's see if they get aggressive even with a big lead. They will have the football again to begin the third quarter. Putting a lot of pressure on the defense. Every play seems to be, we need a stop, we need a stop. As in the shotgun is Washington. Here comes the blitz, they've got a screen set up. Igwebe, Igwebe down the near side. Hey, check that, that was not, that was Curtis. They got it to the running back quickly. And a first down to midfield. And here we go, if they score right here with the ball coming in at the second half, this is gonna be a big play. Now throw a near side caught and going quickly out of bounds. There is Newton. At halftime, we've got two interviews for you. John Mellinger, the athletic director here at Archbishop Spalding and the president here of Spalding in Brian Kohler. So make sure to stick with us on this senior day in Sever. 39 seconds, let's see if Malik can deliver. Washington looking to throw as time. Looking now deep. on the move, rolling right, fakes the throw, tucks it, and he's gonna get out right near the first down marker. 30 seconds on the clock, still three timeouts in which to use for Spalding if need be. And it'll be third down at about a half a yard. I look for I look for the same thing. Get Watkins outside the pocket. He can create some things and see if he could find it. Guabue, Kaufman. You got Barnaby. These guys can all play. A kicker Cooper Welch already getting his leg going as here's the quarterback sneak and a push forward for Washington a first down. And this is where the timeouts really play into the equation. You're able to run the ball in a short down yardage situation and use your first timeout. Very effective, get Watkins, get the first down, call the timeout, set up a play. I think you're gonna try to set up something got to go through the air now. You got 25 seconds, he's got two timeouts left. You got at least two or three plays you can run here. And how many yards do you think they need here to give their kicker Cooper Welch a good chance at a field goal. I think they need to pick up a first down. You get you get the ball inside that 30 yard line, you may have a chance there. I think Spalding's gonna go for the touchdown. I think that this is this is the point. They get a touchdown here, that's a dagger. Got to look there at the outstanding Spalding band. We noticed we, we got a lot of cowboy hats here in the crowd tonight. <laughs> We That's still haven't figured that part out yet. Yeah, we'll, we'll take that task on at halftime. Greg and I will do some uh, <laughs> intrepid reporting. As 25 seconds remain, and Archbishop Spalding looking to add on. On top, 21 to three, as Washington looks towards his sideline and gets ready with his four wide out set. He looks to throw over the middle, caught, and it's a big gainer down to the 20 yard line. Igwebe with a catch, and Spalding is in good shape now for at least a chance at three. The clock is still ticking, 15 seconds and counted. Get rid of it, get rid of it. Throw near side, and a contested catch made. And they gotta call a timeout here. They've got one to use, and they do so with eight seconds on the clock. And with one more timeout remaining, I still think you've got another play for the end zone here. You got one play for the end zone. There's no question about that. The ball at the 12 yard line after that reception brought in by Guanacici, who's had a very good first half. Guanacici, the senior receiver. You've got a lot of veteran wide receivers that really bring it here for small days. It looks like Monte Joseph wanted to take Igwabwe out of the game. So you, get, you go to your second or third wide receivers and that's what they're doing right here. Yeah, we have seen that as well. Also with R.J. Newton, the senior receiver, who has had a lot of activity in this opening half of play. The Spalding looking to blow this thing wide open here. They led 21 to nothing before a Gales drive led to three. And here's the final chance at a touchdown. Again, Spalding does have one timeout remaining. Let's see Malik Washington, he's got to have that clock in his head. There's eight seconds left, he's got to, he's got to have the clock in the head. Two, three, two, step, let the ball go. Here's the throw for the end zone, and it's caught for a touchdown! 
What a drive, and it's the second score of the night for Aaron Igwebe. Beautiful throw by Washington. Three-step drop right over him, and he gunned it. He has shown the ability to throw with pace, but also with touch, and uh, that is huge. When you look at goes it. up, get the ball, takes it off the defense. Beautiful on both. Good pass, even a better catch. And here's Welch who thought he might be kicking a long field goal, doing anything but that. Another point after try, and it's good. And it is a dominant opening half for the home side. The reigning champions in the MIAA in Spalding on top now 28 to 3 in the battle of the top two regular season teams in MIAA play. That was a huge score. Mount St. Joseph's, if they could have got out of there, not give up the score right now, you're down 28 to three against a very talented defense. Again, stick with us at halftime as we'll have a conversation with Spalding's athletic director, John Mellinger. A big weekend here for Spalding. They've got a top ranked field hockey team that's playing for a championship on Sunday as well. And we'll also talk to the president of Spalding as uh, he talks about this special weekend on campus in Brian Kohler. We'll also have a look at what has been an outstanding first half highlights as well in what has been a dominant first half here for the home side. As here's a short kick and a return coming right up the middle that will run the clock out to end this first half from Austin Lewis. And Spalding on their senior day on top 28 to three here to the half. It's all Archbishop Spalding. So the home side in Cavaliers. They blocked a punt in the opening minute and they never looked back. 28-3 in front at halftime. I still remember my first day. You're gonna grow so much. You're going to be prepared for success in college and in life. You will find a deepened faith. You'll become a leader. You're going to be pushed more than you ever have been before. It's gonna be difficult. And this community will help you. Help you become the best version of yourself. You're about to have some of the best days of your lives here. And when you look back, you will realize you were always part of something bigger. Mount St. Joseph is a place where you belong to a lifelong brotherhood. Believe in yourself and have teachers who believe in you. Become the man you were made to be. Register for Open House at msjnet.edu slash open house. We welcome you back here at halftime at Spalding. My name is Adam Pohl, and I'm happy to be joined by the president of Spalding in Brian Kohler. Brian, thank you for taking the time today. Absolutely, Adam. Thank you for for being here. Thanks to everybody, you know, for, you know, for this great, you know, fantastic night. It, it's it's just absolutely excellent to be here. I think it's a great evening for all of us. You know, senior night tonight. You know, what a great you know culmination of uh, uh, four years of hard, focused work for these kids, and it, it just it, it speaks to the you know just the character of of our school and the character you know of the uh, program that Kyle Schmidt's really built for us. So. Yeah, I mean, on the athletic side, this football program, there might not be a, a group of seniors that has had this amount of success at Spalding prior. You know what? Uh, we've been really lucky with this class, and and let me uh, speak to this class. But you know, when it comes to their character, uh, because so today, you know, they did a beautiful thing. They gave uh, their white jerseys. Each each senior gave a jersey to a faculty member that had a significant impact on their lives, and that just again speaks to the character of of Kyle Schmidt's program, of, of the Spalding character that we have, and, and the kind of student that we want to produce. And of course, this is a senior class that really started right coming out of COVID. So what what has it been like for the industry of education here now a few years outside of the COVID pandemic? Well, I'll tell you what, it's been an adjustment. You know, the class of 2024, I think nationally, uh, really has had to adjust. But, but honestly, the kids have adjusted well. Um, you know, they're certainly facing challenges when it comes to, you know, our social emotional, uh, you know, opportunities and, uh, but, uh, but our teachers are adjusting as well. You know, everyone wants that quote unquote normalcy, 
but really at, at the end of the day, uh, normal changes every day for us. Uh, but that's the nature of education. Uh, and you know, our job how, th th at the end of the day is just to, is just to do everything we can to produce great students, uh, you, you know, for the world, you know, for the world ahead. And President Kohler, I know, you know, obviously you're working with kids, and they've got their whole lives ahead of them. What is it like to see these kids realize their dreams, uh, whether it be at Spalding or even beyond? Uh, I'll tell you what, it, it's an absolute blessing. It really is. You know, uh, uh, you know, every single day, every decision that we make as educators uh, is focused on our mission, is focused on our students. Uh, and to come here every day and just see these kids grow from, well, you know, you know, just the smallest little, you know, you know, uh, you know ninth grader to the size of well, the size of these kids, you know, it's, it's just and and then and then on top of that, a blessing for my job is also to work with alums. You know, we've got fifteen thousand alums spread right across the globe, uh, and so you know, so it's not just those four years as Cavaliers, but you know, once you're Cavalier, you're Cavalier for life, you know, and uh, and, and that means something, you know, you know, in our community, and it's a blessing to be here every day, and uh, and to have the opportunity to work with, to work with, with some great people. Well, thank you so much for the time, President Kohler, and we wish you all the best. Oh, that, Adam, thanks so much. All right, take care. That's President Brian Kohler. We're going to take a quick break. We're back with more right after this. I still remember my first day. You're going to grow so much. You're going to be prepared for success in college and in life. You will find a deepened faith. You become a leader. You're going to be pushed more than you ever have been before. It's going to be difficult. And this community will help you. Help you become the best version of yourself. You're about to have some of the best days of your lives here. And when you look back, you will realize you were always part of something bigger. Mount St. Joseph is a place where you belong to a lifelong brotherhood. Believe in yourself and have teachers who believe in you. Become the man you were made to be. Register for Open House at msjnet.edu slash open house. It is halftime here at Archbishop Spalding. My name is Adam Pohl, joined now by the athletic director here of Spalding, Ian John Mellinger. And John, this is a special weekend, not just here, this big football game tonight, but you got a lot going on on campus this weekend, don't you? Yeah, so we had uh, uh, Spirit Week a couple weeks ago, and then we, we had uh, an away game last week, and then so we decided, you know what, last game of the regular season, let's bring the house, right? So we've got... The mechanical bull going it's rodeo night there's a lot of wild stuff happening tonight how much energy has this football program and the success of it here over the last few years brought to this campus well what's really great is um we have such great sports here but our football program is really ingrained in the community and it provides an opportunity for our kids to come out and have a blast on a friday night and um, really come together and, and everybody rallies around our football program does an awesome job supporting all the other sports we've got some other championships this weekend so it's going to be it's going to be really great for you and your role as athletic director, is this your favorite time of year? Oh, man, it's hard to say. I mean, it's, it's, it's one of the longer times of year. We haven't had a break in a long time. I mean, I feel like we just broke August camp, you know, way back in the first. But uh, it's, it really is a unique time of year. And obviously today you're playing for the number one seed in the MIAA playoffs upcoming. How big would it be to get back to that championship game? Well, I'll tell you what, I mean, this team works incredibly hard, and it would be a testament to their hard work, our coaches' dedication. So getting back there would be really special for these guys and send our seniors off the right way. That's John Mellinger. John, thank you so much for your time here today. Best of luck in this uh, big-time championship season here at Spalding. Thank you so much. That is the athletic director of Archbishop Spalding, John Mellinger. We're going to take a quick break. We're back with more halftime here, as this is... MIAA football on YouTube. I still remember my first day. You're going to grow so much. You're going to be prepared for success in college and in life. You will find a deepened faith. You'll become a leader. You're going to be pushed more than you ever have been before. It's going to be difficult. And this community will help you help you become the best version of yourself. You're about to have some of the best days of your lives here. And when you look back, you will realize you were always part of something bigger. Mount St. Joseph is a place where you belong to a lifelong brotherhood. Believe in yourself and have teachers who believe in you. 
Become the man you were made to be. Register for Open House at msjnet.edu slash open house. I still remember my first day. You're gonna grow so much. You're going to be prepared for success in college and in life. You will find a deepened faith. Become a leader. You're going to be pushed more than you ever have been before. It's gonna be difficult. And this community will help you. Help you become the best version of yourself. You're about to have some of the best days of your lives here. And when you look back, you will realize you were always part of something bigger. Mount St. Joseph is a place where you belong to a lifelong brotherhood. Believe in yourself and have teachers who believe in you. Become the man you were made to be. Register for Open House at msjnet.edu slash open house. Crowd. It is a packed house here on Senior Day at Archbishop Spaulding. They're honoring the dance and cheer team right now, the great seniors that have put in all the work over the years. As Spaulding is up big, 28 to 3 over Mount St. Joseph here at the break. We're going to take another short time out, and we'll take a break and look back after this at highlights in just a moment. I still remember my first day. You're gonna grow so much. You're going to be prepared for success in college and in life. You will find a deepened faith. You'll become a leader. You're going to be pushed more than you ever have been before. It's gonna be difficult. And this community will help you help you become the best version of yourself. You're about to have some of the best days of your lives here. And when you look back, you will realize you were always part of something bigger. Mount St. Joseph is a place where you belong to a lifelong brotherhood. Believe in yourself and have teachers who believe in you. Become the man you were made to be. Register for Open House at msjnet.edu slash open house. I still remember my first day. You're gonna grow so much. You're going to be prepared for success in college and in life. You will find a deepened faith. You'll become a leader. You're going to be pushed more than you ever have been before. It's gonna be difficult. And this community will help you help you become the best version of yourself. You're about to have some of the best days of your lives here. And when you look back, you will realize you were always part of something bigger. Mount St. Joseph is a place where you belong to a lifelong brotherhood. Believe in yourself and have teachers who believe in you. Become the man you were made to be. Register for Open House at msjnet.edu slash open house. I still remember my first day. You're gonna grow so much. You're going to be prepared for success in college and in life. You will find a deepened faith. You'll become a leader. You're going to be pushed more than you ever have been before. It's gonna be difficult. And this community will help you help you become the best version of yourself. You're about to have some of the best days of your lives here. And when you look back, you will realize you were always part of something bigger. Mount St. Joseph is a place where you belong to a lifelong brotherhood. Believe in yourself and have teachers who believe in you. Become the man you were made to be. Register for Open House at msjnet.edu slash open house. 
It's 28 to three, Archbishop Spalding here oh, at halftime. And boy, we are into the month of November. This is the month in which we will crown an MIA champion. And uh, on Sunday, November 19th, that is the title games at Johnny United Stadium on the campus of Towson University. Now the B Championship game will be at 2 p.m. and the A Championship game will follow at 5 p.m. Tickets are available at miaachampionships.com. Only $15 for students. Let's take a look at the A Conference standings right now and you see how big this game is. Archbishop Spalding at 5 and 0. Mount St. Joseph at four and one. So these are gonna be the top two seeds in the upcoming tournament. The top four advance, so it is a semifinal. Right now it is going to be McDonough in the three seed and Loyola Blakefield will be the four seed. So the winner of this game will host Loyola Blakefield next week. The loser of this game will host McDonough in the semifinals and then the winner of course will play at Johnny United's stadium on the campus of Towson in just a few weeks time. We're gonna take a quick break. We'll be back with more. It's halftime from Spalding. I still remember my first day. You're gonna grow so much. You're going to be prepared for success in college and in life. You will find a deepened faith. You'll become a leader. You're going to be pushed more than you ever have been before. It's going to be difficult. And this community will help you. Help you become the best version of yourself. You're about to have some of the best days of your lives here. And when you look back, you will realize you were always part of something bigger. Mount St. Joseph is a place where you belong to a lifelong brotherhood. Believe in yourself and have teachers who believe in you. Become the man you were made to be. Register for Open House at msjnet.edu slash open house. I still remember my first day. You're gonna grow so much. You're going to be prepared for success in college and in life. You will find a deepened faith. You'll become a leader. You're going to be pushed more than you ever have been before. It's gonna be difficult. And this community will help you. Help you become the best version of yourself. You're about to have some of the best days of your lives here. And when you look back, you will realize you were always part of something bigger. Mount St. Joseph is a place where you belong to a lifelong brotherhood. Believe in yourself and have teachers who believe in you. Become the man you were made to be. Register for Open House at msjnet.edu slash open house. It's senior day here at Spalding, and Archbishop Spalding on top 28 to three here at halftime. What an outstanding start to the game, Greg, and it got going for Spalding almost immediately with a blocked punt. Probably the worst thing that can happen for Mont St. Joseph. They get the blocked punt, comes untouched, and scores right off the bat for up seven. And then Spalding got right back to it. Look at this rollout and great touch throw by Washington. Washington showing all his talents right there. The speed, the feet, the hands, and that big arm. Now, even though they're down big, the Gales did move the football at times in the first half, including this great post pass. This is where they had. They had it first in goal, four tries to the goal line. Did come up nothing but this field goal. They should have got seven right there. That could have set the tone. The Gales got on the board. They were trying to cut even more so into the Spalding lead, but this diving interception by Tyler Brown thwarted that, and then the Cavaliers were able to score to take the big lead. That last, good, that last score put the dagger right where they wanted. The 28 to three, our halftime score will be back right after this second half, just minutes away. I still remember my first day. 
you're gonna grow so much. You're going to be prepared for success in college and in life. You will find a deepened faith. You'll become a leader. You're going to be pushed more than you ever have been before. It's gonna be difficult. And this community will help you. Help you become the best version of yourself. You're about to have some of the best days of your lives here. And when you look back, you will realize you were always part of something bigger. Mount St. Joseph is a place where you belong to a lifelong brotherhood. Believe in yourself and have teachers who believe in you. Become the man you were made to be. Register for Open House at msjnet.edu slash open house. I still remember my first day. You're gonna grow so much. You're going to be prepared for success in college and in life. You will find a deepened faith. You'll become a leader. You're going to be pushed more than you ever have been before. It's gonna be difficult. And this community will help you help you become the best version of yourself. You're about to have some of the best days of your lives here. And when you look back, you will realize you were always part of something bigger. Mount St. Joseph is a place where you belong to a lifelong brotherhood. Believe in yourself and have teachers who believe in you. Become the man you were made to be. Register for Open House at msjnet.edu slash open house. Well, it was a prolific start to the first half for Archbishop Spalding. They will have the football coming out of the break. So a late touchdown, and then almost immediately you come out of halftime and you get your hands on the football again. A great opportunity here for the Cavaliers to continue to march ahead. It's it just been a bad first half for Montaigne It's like waking up in the morning, you step out of bed, and you're down 28-3. to You got to get something going in the second half. I think the defense from Mount St. Joseph in this first drive has got to hold Spalding to a punt at some point. You can't give up any more points. So for Mount St. Joseph, obviously you have a quarterback that you're facing that is really highly thought of nationally in rankings, but it's the run game that has been so hard to consistently shut down. Do they have to devote more to stopping that penetration up to the middle of their defense. It's true that Spalding came out with a good game plan. They know Malik Washington can score. They know he can run out of the pocket. They know he can pass, but they got Caden Curtis, a running back. He's dominated that front line. He's averaging six yards a carry, and he's probably doing that average right now at about six yards a carry. They've got to stop the run first and hope for a mistake somewhere. And even if the Gales cannot come back and win this game, Really, your postseason starts next week. You're going to have a home game. Both of these teams do. And it's going to be so important to try to gain some momentum uh, to have a good feeling about yourself going into the playoffs because Mount St. Joe's, I mean, they have been playing outstanding football. They've actually won their last four league games coming into today. Wins against Gilman, McDonough, Calvert Hall, and then 27-7 last week against Pilates. They had the momentum coming in, that blocked punt right in the first play, of the, pretty much the first minute of the game, just deflated everything for them, and it's been downhill. Now so let's far. take a look at uh, some of the standouts today, and of course, Washington has had a remarkable day, but this sophomore wide receiver in Iguibe has been dynamic, such a dangerous threat for Spalding every time he touches the football. They try, they try to get him the ball as much as possible. It seems every time it's third and long, he's looking for a Guibre. And we just saw Tyler Brown, number three, who made a big interception late in the first half as the Gales are marching, and that could have been an enormous changing of momentum in this game if Mount St. Joseph was able to score a touchdown late and make it a 21 to 10 game into the break. Instead, the shoe was on the other foot. Winston Watkins made one bad throw and Spalding made him pay for it with the interception. So we're just uh, moments away from the start of this second half. So happy to have you with us 
this is the MIAA Game of the Week on YouTube and these two teams in Spalding and Mount St. Joseph. I mean, they are a combined nine and one in league play. And so they have had remarkable seasons, both of them. And uh, there's a chance, I mean, there's a great chance that these two are on a crash course to play at Johnny United Stadium, which will be on November 19th with a championship uh, on hand. Of course, Mount St. Joe's, their last title in 2019. And for Spalding, they got their first crown a year ago and a chance to repeat. They will be the favorite going into the postseason. And that's the key. You may see this team again. You've got to show up. You can't let this score get out of hand. If you play them again, the momentum then goes to the other side. Now, Spalding has lost two games this year, but they were against teams out of this area. They came into 2023 with a record of 21 and two in their last two seasons. They lost in the postseason after an undefeated regular season two years ago. Last year, they were able to finish it off with a decisive win in the championship game against Calvert Hall. What I like about Spalding this year, they put a schedule together, St. St. Joe's Prep, MTEP Charter. They both lost, and those are top-notch schools that they played. They play a very solid, high-priced schedule, and I think that hardens them right now to get ready for the playoffs. That's a great point, and they have played a very physical game, and that really does play well when the weather gets cold, and we have felt that here in the Mid-Atlantic this week, have we not? It got a little chilly out there as soon as that sun went down. And I got the answer for the Cowboy Hats. It is rodeo day game here at archbishop spalding who would have thought it the rodeo has been in full effect here no doubt about it thank you greg sir our intrepid reporter johnny on the spot per se as there's the opening kick of the third quarter one hop and a chance for a return right out of the gate as spalding will have the opening possession of this second half beginning at their own 30 yard line as another nice return there antonio ledbetter the sophomore there on the kick return. Let's see if, what, if we're going to go back to Caden Curtis and start that running game again. And let's see if that Mont St. Joseph defense, Sean Curtis, Sahir West, Greg Roman, Mason Wynn, they've got to show up right now. This is big. Malik Washington with the two backs to his side, the handoff up the middle, and not much doing there for Caden Curtis. And there is right off the bat, Sean Curtis, the junior. That, that these, these guys up front, they got to get the penetration. They get penetration. Yeah, Curtis, we've called his name a few times today. Also a nice job penetrating from Jabari Berry, the big sophomore right in the heart of the Gales defense. They got five or six on the line defensively here on second down and long. As Washington looks to throw, he's got a man near the yard to make. It's a first down for the Cavaliers. The senior there to reel it in, R.J. Newton. It looks like every time they can get Newton or Fabwe one-on-one by themselves, he's going for it. That was a nice stop route right at the yard to gain. And it's good coverage, good coverage, a better pass. As the carry up the middle, contact in the backfield, but able to barrel his way forward for a short game. There is Curtis. It looks like the Gales are devoting more to their defensive front to try to stop this run game, which is taking a bit of a risk on the outside. Second down and about eight to go here. Let's see if they go deep one time. Over the middle throw, and it is bubbled oh. and dropped. Nearly an interception. That was exactly what Mount St. Joseph's needed. That was exactly what they could have used there. Angelo Ross was in perfect position. He jumped it right there. He, he, he has it in his hands, and he couldn't get it. And Newton stopped at the sticks for a second straight time. And this time, Ross was there, but he couldn't reel it in. And if he did, he was probably heading all the way the other way for a score. Malik Washington was just eyeballing that all the way down. The third down and long, we haven't said that much today. And here's a throw, a screen to Curtis. Curtis with a chance, tries to cut it up, but he's gonna be taken down well short of the yard to make. It'll be fourth down and about four. A strong stop by the Gales defense. And that the Gales needed, they had to hold him, they did hold him. Let's see what they can do on offense now. Pass was tipped, still good there, but good penetration from the backs. 
and with a big lead, they're going to play the field position game, and Spalding is going to punt it away here. And the kicker, Cooper Welch, will put the boots into it. And the kick is away, and calling for a fair catch and making it right near the 20-yard line there is Greg Roman. So a big stop, exactly what the Gales needed to yes, open this exactly, third quarter. exactly, that's exactly it. They couldn't have given up any points. Once again, though, they're starting at the 20. It seems like that's all they had. They had one start in the second half at their 30. That's where they went 70 yards and got their field goal. Now we're back to the 20 end. They're gonna, every, play, every time they've gotten a chance, it's been a long field for Mount St. Joseph. It's a good point. We've seen early in that first quarter the block punt for a touchdown and then plus field position in the first drive that ended up in another score for Spalding that put them up 14-0 right out of the gate. It has been a long way to go for Winston Watkins and the Gales all night long as here's the toss to the right side to Williams and he's gonna lose yardage. And you can see that the Gales are trying to run around the power of the defensive interior here for Spalding. And that's Elijah Jones, he's the hybrid guy back there. They play that 3-3-5, three, three, he's one of the five, this time he moves up and makes a tackle. They're very talented in that second the defensive backs and those linebackers, very active. It's easy to talk about the players that throw the ball, run it or catch it, but uh, boy, the strength. As here's a throw over the middle, caught, and it's a first down. A nice dark throw there to Bird right over the middle to move the chains for the Gales, but it is the front, the interior of the Cavaliers that has been so big. Look at this pass. A zip, and they keep, they keep, over and over, looking for that middle of the field. He's got success in there. He should stay there. Watkins with pace to the line as Williams breaks a few tackles and heads out of bounds after a gain of about three. You don't want to give up on the run game altogether, do you? You have to show the run game. You got to keep those linebackers honest. You got to keep that front three for Spalding honest. They can't just come flying after you. He's got to go deep. I'm looking for Watkins to go deep. Pressure coming, Watkins is able to elude the rush. A chance to run and he's gonna have a first down as that was quite a nimble move and now power at the end of it, well into Spalding territory. Again, you, you forget he's 6'6", 230. If he gets outside the pocket, he was looking to go deep. There's no question on that one. He, he pulled it in, he makes a quick move right there and then he just puts his shoulder down. He broke the ankles there per se on that move, kind of a basketball tight move but we do have a player down on the far side of the field unfortunately and it is one of the Gales and I think it is the sophomore wide receiver Allen Gillis number 80 that yeah, is not. down right in front of the Mount St. Joseph bench hate to see it and I hate to see it, especially at this high school level these kids come out play hard we're hoping that it's nothing serious. Maybe just got the wind knocked out of him. He got caught up into that big truck that uh, came out of Winston Watkins. We'll take a quick break. We're back with more right after this. I still remember my first day. You're going to grow so much. You're going to be prepared for success in college and in life. You will find a deepened faith. You'll become a leader. You're going to be pushed more than you ever have been before. It's going to be difficult. And this community will help you. Help you become the best version of yourself. You're about to have some of the best days of your lives here. And when you look back, you will realize you were always part of something bigger. Well, Gillis got to his feet and walked off the field, and that was good to see. Love to see it. Just got, I think he got the wind knocked out of him. He kind of had everybody fall right on him, right on his back. But right now we have a good drive going for Mount St. Joseph. Let's see if they can get six. First down for the Gales, who put Barnaby in motion. Here's a rush, trying to elude it. Watkins does so, and he gets stung on the far sideline for a short loss. Boy, he has been so tough to bring down today. Even with all of this pressure, we have not really seen him sacked well beyond the line of scrimmage. You, you've got to get two hands on that big guy, and if worse, worse, just what they did here, push him out of bounds. That's exactly what you got to do with him. He looks like he wants to go deep. 
he doesn't have the time to go deep. About second down and 12 here. As in the shotgun again is Watkins. They're blitzing. Rolling left, has to elude the rush. He's running again, cutting it upfield, and shows his back to the defense after he took quite a crack in the side of play earlier. And it's going to be third down and long here for the Gales. Again, it looks like Mont St. Josh. They want to go long, but he just does not have time. He's running for his life now almost on every play. That could be four down territory here from the plus 40 yard line here for Mount St. Joseph. Down 28-3, about halfway through this third quarter. As Watkins in the shotgun again, they rush three. It's a screen to, to Zion Williams, cutting it up, breaking through That's for a first, first down. down. Good play call. Got good four play. or five yards after contact. Yeah, good play call. They had that defense with blitzing. They were very aggressive. Everybody's flying off the ball. Middle screen, got the blockers out in front of them, and Zion Williams makes people miss. Yeah, the secondary had dropped well back as well, and there was a bit of a hole there in the middle to take advantage of. First down and 10 for Mount St. Joseph. Again, down big by four scores here, a quick out pattern caught, and taking it out of bounds is Cordcott, or check that, that's Payton Youngbar, the outstanding junior receiver. That's a second catch for Youngbar, they gotta get him more involved in the game. We have seen the arm strength of both of these quarterbacks, Malik Washington of Spalding and Winston Watkins of Mount St. Joseph on those quick outs, have quick, we not? And they, they've been screaming with those passes. You don't see that often in the high school game. Deep pass here, but well overshot as he was looking for Dennis Morgan and it appeared they were not on the same page. Uh, Morgan's doing a post and I think uh, Watkins thought he was gonna go straight up the side. He just did a quick post ball right over his head. They gotta get Morgan involved. I'm, I'm looking for them to get Morgan involved, get some of the, uh, get these young bar, get Barnaby involved. He's gotta spread the ball around a little bit more. And when you're around this part of the field, you start talking about being in field goal range, but Mount St. Joseph, they are not thinking about a field goal here on third down and long. Low snap, ball's on the ground. Who's on it? And it is Spalding. The second turnover force. They've also had a block kick. Another mistake. And the Cavaliers have possession. Two mistakes by Watkins, and they've jumped on both of them. That is the second snap that's hit the ground today. One was on a big third down and goal, but you can see that hit the left foot there of Watkins and getting on the football with the recovery was Delmar White, the junior defensive lineman. That's exactly what Mont St. Joseph's didn't want to happen. Had a nice drive going over 40 yards coming downfield. They get nothing. And half the third quarter is in the rear view mirror and it's still 28 to three as a carry right up the middle. And Curtis, this is the time of the game with a big lead in the second half where you can really lean on that rushing attack. If they can get Curtis going and they start eating up this clock with that kind of 28 to three lead, that puts Mont St. Joseph's in a real difficult position. Now Spalding has uh, been really coming up to the line in a hurry. As here's a handoff and a big gainer of about 10 yards past the 45, almost all the way out to the 50. And the Cavaliers move the chains again. The senior's starting to put the game on his shoulders and I'll take you to the promised land. He's averaging six yards a carry. It's well over six yards a carry in this game. Outstanding carry around the edge there. And now Washington looking to throw deep down the middle. The long ball just over the long outstretched arms there of RJ Newton. They were going for it all. I like that call. You, you hit the run, you hit the run, you hit the run, then go deep. They didn't catch him sleeping. I think they thought that a beautiful play call. As you see the play action there, and Washington had time in which to operate. Again, 28-3 our score. Second down and 10, as in motion is Kaufman. He's been a bit quieter today at three touchdowns yesterday. It's Curtis again with room to roam. Right at the middle, first down. Well, more. It's a 20-yard scamper for the tailback. 
the senior on his senior night is having a game to remember. I tell you what, any tailback will tell you, the more you get, the more you want. They keep feeding him the ball. He gets that sweat going. He's starting to run. He's starting to control the game. And the Gales went offside as it was number 71, Brian, or check that, Holden Powell, a freshman, number 77, that crossed the line. First down and five now with the clock running. Three, three half. Here for Spalding. They're not really waiting that long to get into their offense. They've got a lot of rhythm. I thought they would wait, take this clock down real low. They're waiting, they're waiting. Let's see if he passes on this one. A quick release on target. And there for the reception again is Newton. Boy, that quick out has been there tonight. And it's first down and 10 for Spalding. Needed three or four yards, quick out, three or four yards, zip from Washington. Right to RJ Newton. You can just see the velocity on that delivery there. So impressive. You go back to the run game now, you give it to Curtis, let him eat it up. And Curtis going around that left side again. The handoff, he's to the 10, to the five. And it's gonna be first down and goal here for the Cavaliers. And that's exactly what they do. Go back to the bread and butter. They've got success. Feed Curtis. That run left to the short side of the field has been big for them on this drive. First down and goal to goal as Spalding looks for their first score of this third quarter. Washington rolling right, throws back left, and all alone it's going to be a big fella in for the score. Tackle eligible. How about that? Liam Lynch, tackle eligible play. Liam Lynch with a moment to remember. You're going to remember that when you're 6'6", 250, and you get your hands on the ball. Hello, six. Boy, his heart might have been in his throat as he flared out to try to catch this ball. But once he had it, it was smooth sailing into the end zone and a great celebration to boot as the officials come together to talk about it. And uh, the question is, was he eligible? And he is. And it is now 34 to 3, Spalding. Great play call. Great. And it's always fun to see those big linemen get a little bit of that six point fever. As the extra point is up and it is good. And it's 35 to 3 now. Spalding in front. And Lynch is fired up as he comes off of the field. How could he not be? So it's 35-3. The Cavaliers are in control in the game of the week. Mount St. Joseph is a place where you belong to a lifelong brotherhood. Believe in yourself and have teachers who believe in you. Become the man you were made to be. Register for open house at msjnet.edu slash open house. Great to have you back with us on our MIAA Game of the Week. You could argue the game of the year in the regular season. And it has been a dominant tone set by the home side in Spalding. Spalding's just clearly dominating special teams. They're dominating. They're running the ball effectively. Watkins is making all the plays. As here's the kick. And the Gales will have it on the return coming to the near side. This is Williams, and Williams with room to roam as he crosses the 40 and gives the Gales their best field position of the contest. Beautiful return, Zion Williams saw an opening on the outside, got the corner. Maybe this is get them started a little bit, but they've got to score and score quick right now. They have tried these returns coming across the field to start here throughout this game without much success. At that time, Williams had some room to roam and from the 40-yard line, they'll get it going. Spalding on top, 35-3, to three, with about 4 minutes, 39 seconds of play in this third quarter. If this score stays this way, a Spalding victory would mean they would play Loyola Blakefield next week in the semifinals, and Mount St. Joseph would host McDonough. 
As back to pass, rolling left, eluding, or rolling right, I should say, eluding the pressure and just dumping it off. Incomplete into the flat there, Winston Watkins again. I mean, you don't think of him as this elusive quarterback, but he has been tonight. He has been, and he, he's been because he's had somebody in his face as soon as he went back to pass. They're playing much better on the backside for those defensive backs are clamming down. No one's open, and he does not have the time to look for that second receiver. We have two quarterbacks in this game tonight that are also uh, about to turn the page to basketball season here soon after this football campaign comes to an end. And, Sometimes that ability of playing basketball, he almost looks like it is a basketball move out there on the football field. Winston Watkins, starting center for Mount St. Joe's. Let's As again look up. at looking to go deep. He's got to roll out again, and somehow stays on his feet, and he's going to get a yard, oh, and flat. he's going to get 15 more. As that hit was late, and it's going to move Mount St. Joe's into Spalding territory. Now that looked like it was going to be a sack. I thought he was sacked there. Look, he pulled the ball down. He could a little fake, and McVictor got a little bit anxious. When you have a running quarterback like that and you can't hit him, you can't hit him. When you get that shot right here, you got to slow up. No. That's clearly out of bounds. Yeah, late hit there delivered by Ty McVicker. McVicker, the defensive lineman, the senior. When you're chasing that quarterback on every play, it's tough to let up when you finally get there. You get a little aggressive in there. You <laughs> want to get that shot in, but you can't do it out of bounds. The Gales trying to build some momentum here late in this contest. Still in the third quarter. But down big on what has been a frustrating day at the office as a handoff to the senior tailback, Austin Lewis. He's a bigger, bulkier back as he powers his way forward for three yards. Again, they're trying to just, uh, just show him the run. Maybe something good will happen. But when you, you're at four minutes now, you're, you're down by 32. You got to put the ball up. Where's Morgan? You got to go to your big guys. Dennis Morgan's been a little silent, particularly in this third quarter. Yeah, Morgan lined up, I believe, here on the near side of the field. As Watkins walking over towards his sideline. Maybe changing up the play call here a bit late. Here comes a quick screen to the far side of the field and a short gain of two or three yards. Well, the good thing is that is the player that was injured earlier in this quarter, Alan Gillis. Great to see him back on the field. You can see him back, gets a nice catch. I'm not thrilled about it, it's only three yards. You need more than three yards on these plays. Clock's running, clock's running, clock's running, and you're getting three yards on the play. You gotta go downfield here. Look for something maybe over the middle again. No doubt four down territory here for the Gales. As on third and five, they fake the screen. They're going deep, looking for Gillis again, and he cannot get there. Good job defensively by Trent Gillis of Archbishop Spalding as he was guarding Allen Gillis of Mount St. Joseph. Yeah, he pump faked it, looking to see if they can get Gillis to bite on it. He didn't. The junior is one of the hybrids in that 3-3-5 defense. This time he's playing defensive back instead of calling up. I think what they're going to try to do again, you got to find that soft spot the in the middle for him. And no doubt they're going for fourth down here at the 38-yard line of Archbishop Spaulding. Watkins in the shotgun. They've got motion here to the near side as he looks to fire down the far sideline, trying to make a one-handed catch, but unable to reel it in was Morgan, and Spalding will take over on down. A beautiful pass, a beautiful stretch by Morgan. He went to his money maker. The pass is right on the money. That was and almost an incredible catch. That would have been an ESPN highlight right there. With one hand, Morgan almost tipped it back to himself. But as he tried to reel it in, he was making contact with the ground simultaneously. And the ball goes back to Spalding on top 35-3. to three. Mount St. Joseph's hold the ball for over three minutes. Comes down, they can't get points. They stall, stall, stall. They've had two good drives in this third quarter, but nothing to show as the carry up the middle and able to fall forward as he's done 
so often here tonight. Actually, that is a new tailback in the game. That is the sophomore Ledbetter. A chance to give some of your depth pieces some experience in a big game tonight with this huge lead. You want to stay healthy. Yes, with the huge lead, I was surprised to even see Malik Washington back in the game. Led better the tailback again. Washington with that side arm fling. Kind of a home test there. As here is a great job again to gain extra yardage by Ig Wiebe, who's been such a factor with the ball in his hand. Anytime he gets the ball, it's like a gyro machine. He's pinballing all over the place. Look at this sidearm throw. That's almost like a baseball throw. Patrick Mahomes looking right at him. That looked like a second baseman trying to turn two on a 6-4-3 double play. <laughs> You really didn't see quarterbacks throwing from that arm angle very often pre-Mahomes, did. did you? Once Mahomes start doing it, everybody seems to be doing that now. Let's see if they just go right back to the run game, eat up the rest of the clock. They fake the screen. Washington doesn't have it, and look at him take off here. He's on the wow. run with room to roll to the 25, and a flag flies. And they got a hold. They got a hold on R.J. Newton right in front of him. And about, that was unnecessary. You got you got this kid out in the open field. He might have gone all the he way. Could have. Malik Washington does not need that kind of block. He could have got rid of that guy by himself. Boy, you really saw the kind of turf that he could just eat up with those long strides. And they've got him listed. He's a four-star recruit. They have him listed as a just a drop-back quarterback. Yeah. I think by the time he's a senior, he's going to be a dual-threat quarterback. And they're going to move it all the way back here. Now, this is a flag that, again, is the spot of the foul, and the holding penalty happened well down the field, so it's going to be first down at about two yards. You don't see that very often, yeah, do you? No. <laughs> so it's not a 25-yard gain, but it is still positive yardage here for the Cavaliers. As Washington again in the shotgun, and he's looking to throw here. He's going to let it go deep down the field, left sideline. Come on! No fall pass. Inside the five-yard line, first down and goal, Smolding. And that's how you make up for a holding call. You make a holding on, you blow that play, you come right back to him and say, son, now you've redeemed yourself. What an outstanding play by Newton. Beautiful pass. Just perfect touch coming from Malik Washington. Put it right in the bread basket. Now we have seen so many touch throws tonight from the junior standout. As here's the handoff to Ledbetter right up the middle, powering forward. Is he in? He's close to it. And he's in. It's a touchdown, Spalding. And they continue to add on on this senior day. What a statement made by the Cavaliers. They've got their foot on the gas pedal. They're pushing that gas pedal, and they're not letting up. They're just scoring at will. And look at the power of the front to push Ledbetter through. 41-3 to three is our score. And now the clock is running with Spalding on top by more than 35. The extra point is en route, and it is up and good as once again Welch puts it through. So the clock is now running, and it will run out before this uh, kickoff comes to fruition. So through three quarters, Spalding's on top, 42 to three. We're gonna take a break. We'll be back with more of the MIAA Game of the Week after this. I still remember my first day. You're gonna grow so much. You're going to be prepared for success in college and in life. You will find a deepened faith. You'll become a leader. You're going to be pushed more than you ever have been before. It's going to be difficult. And this community will help you. Help you become the best version of yourself. You're about to have some of the best days of your lives here. And when you look back, you will realize you were always part of something bigger. Mount St. Joseph is a place where you belong to a lifelong brotherhood. Believe in yourself and have teachers who believe in you. Become the man you were made to be.
Oh, there's the kick. It's going to go out of bounds. A flag will be thrown, and the Gales will have good field position as Archbishop Spaulding outscoring Mount St. Joseph 14 0 in that third quarter, even though the Gales did have two pretty good drives. The Gales had two great drives. They, they were efficient on offense. They cannot finish. They have, they have not finished one drive for six points. You know, the Gales will go back to work again, and you got to wonder if these teams will start to dip into their bench. They're both going to host playoff games next week, and uh, you want to be fresh and healthy for what is going to be the biggest time of your season. There's no question. Both these quarterbacks, big-time quarterbacks, I would see that both quarterbacks, uh, it looks like it's trending out, so they're, the Gales are bringing out the, their, their big guy. They're bringing out Watkins. And a new quarterback. Actually, we do have a new quarterback, and I think it is Nolan Zenkowitz. Yeah, Nolan Zenkowitz will get a go for a first time here for the Gales. And yeah, the clock is put back at the 12 minute mark because that kick went out of bounds. So from the 35 yard line, that is where the Gales will start their first possession of the fourth quarter. And again, with a lopsided score, we will have a running clock. So an incomplete pass or a ball out of bounds doesn't matter. As here's a handoff up the middle and not much doing as once again, the ferocity of the front four being shown there here for Spalding. Delmar White, I think you're gonna see a lot of changes on offense and defense for both teams. So Winston Watkins calls it a night, he made one bad play and interception, they scored on it. He made the one bad play and the fumble, they scored on it. You can't make mistakes like that against the top quality team like Spurs. They had some good moments, but in the end, uh, the Gales do not have a touchdown on the board as here's a carry up the middle again, and a big hit delivered as a second straight run for the sophomore Caleb Davis, and both go for negative yards. Third down and long, about 11 or 12 to go. Here for Mount St. Joseph. Trent Gillis and Elijah Jones, those two hybrids, they're playing all over the floor. Them with Flowers makes Spalding a very dangerous defensive team. For a Gale side that expected better tonight, how do you put this in the rear view mirror behind you quickly with the biggest game of your year on deck? You have to have that short memory. It's here, we did it, we lost, wow, we go to the next day. Look at this lob pass. And it's incomplete. It was nearly picked there by Carl Wilson of Spalding. And then Peyton Youngbar actually had a chance to make the catch. But uh, the attempt by Wilson to pick it may have uh, kind of made it a tough grab there. And it's going to be a punt upcoming here for the Gales with the clock running. Clock's running. I think what you're going to see is uh, I'd be surprised if we saw Malik Washington come back on the field. I think we'll see a backup quarterback and probably a backup running back. Yeah, more than likely on the other side, it's been a prolific day for the tailback. Caden Curtis, the senior running back, wearing number 12 of Archbishop Spalding. Now back the kick, the clock inside, 10 minutes remaining. As here comes the punt. And boy, nearly another block, and we're going to have a flag as coming through and making contact there was Eli Bass. Now Bass blocked the kick in the first quarter and scored, and he got a little too hungry and trying to do so again. And the Gales are more than likely going to get a first down here, and they will. It is going to be roughing the punter. It's a, Eli Bass should have had that one. I don't know how he missed that one. He had that one dead to right. It went right through his hands. That would have been a Frank Beamer special, right? Blocking two punts in one game. The old Virginia Tech coach known for their outstanding special teams. So the offense of the Gales will come back onto the field first down at 10 from near midfield. Mount St. Joseph is going to play McDonough, and they beat McDonough earlier this year. They'll play them in the semifinal. Now Spalding is going to play Loyola Blakefield. If the two regular season results take place again we're going to see these two at it again with a title on the line right at it again but who has the momentum now mentally it's spalding it's yes. dominated this game mentally they've got the victory a statement on this senior day as here's the carry and hit behind the line of scrimmage caleb davis a good job to power forward and get positive yardage off of that carry 
nothing has been easy for the Gales in between the tackles today. Their front, the, 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 the winner of this game right now, it's that front three for Spalding just dominated that line of scrimmage. And they've done it from first downs, second downs, and they've done it from the right beginning of the game. Again, the backup quarterback, Zenkowitz, a senior in the game. He's going to make his second throw of the day. And we're going to have a flag as the defense got there a bit early. The intended pass for Jaden Timmons, the senior. But Timmons was being brought down as that pass came to him. Pass interference. That's good. Let this new quarterback let him get his arm out there. He's probably not seen the field that much. Let's see what he has. Got to warm it up on a cold night as well. Not easy to come off the bench and start letting it go. As it was Daniel Miller a little bit early there in coverage. And that's a 15 yard penalty here in the high school game, correct? Correct, and it gives them a new life. Let's see if they throw it again. The clock's running continuously now. So this is gonna be maybe one or two possessions you have. You might as well try, put out all the stops, see what this kid can do. First and 10 for the 35 yard line. And here's a fake give and a screen pass. And it's gonna go for a short gain. The reception by TJ Gracia. Mount St. Joseph's just gonna take their time. They see the writing on the wall, 42 to three. Uh, then they're gonna stop the bleeding right here. Take your time. They'd love to get a positive result if you are the Gales as far as this drive is considered. As here is a rollout and a throw and a nice catch made by Timmons. Uh, two completions in a row, they're short. Give them a little confidence. But you're right, if they get seven, put some points on the board, at least they can leave with some positivity. Clock ticking, down near six minutes. But actually, it has come to a halt as we have an injured player on the field. Fans, a reminder that postseason football is right around the corner. And Sunday, November 19th at Johnny United Stadium, on the campus of Towson University, both championship games at the MIAA level. So the MIAA football championships, the B championship game will be at 2 p.m. The A championship game at 5 p.m. These two teams could be at it again. Tickets are available at MIAAchampionships.com and tickets are only $15 for students. You don't want to see an injury late in the game like this, particularly when you know you got playoffs coming right around the corner. No doubt about it. Still trying to see who the injured player is down near the far sideline. And I think it is one of the Spalding players. 42 to three, Spalding leading. Uh, the guy on three A resounding point. victory right is now. in front of them in this, their final game of the regular season. Spalding came in five and zero in league play. And the Gales, they lost their first league game and then won four in a row they in MIAA in, yeah, play. They came in with a bunch of momentum. Is that the and president of the first that we played, you know, that first play with the block punt, it was downhill ever since. Mount St. Joseph's could effectively got zero on offense. That was less than a minute into the game. They went three and out. The snap back to the punter had a little bit too much arc on it. And Eli Best, he blocked it. And then he picked it up, scooped it up, and scored. And it was an enormous moment right out of the gate. And really, the Gales have not been able to recover from that moment. The Freshman defensive back. What a moment to be a freshman to make a play like that. And it, it was, that was like two minutes into the game. And right off the bat, that was the statement. They continued to make. I'm impressed with Spalding as they kept their foot on the pedal. They made sure that they were going to make a statement in this game once they got the lead. It looks like uh, everything is okay. And we are back to action here. 
at Spalding. The clock is running again on what is third down. And about five, high arcing pass looking for the end zone. And they're gonna get another pass interference. As right there, it was Eli Best in coverage against Denver Fauntleroy. And uh, kind of a face guarding situation he here. He never turned around. You gotta, you gotta turn that head around just to show that you're gonna go for the ball. He was playing the man the whole time. Never looked for the football. Easy throw. So that's a third defensive penalty on this drive against Spalding. So their reserve defenders have had a tough time in shutting down the Gills, even though most of the yardage has been gained through penalty. And this is gonna set up a first down and 10 on the 15 yard penalty from near the 15 yard line. Clock is still running, now 5.19 and ticking to play in the game. Let's see if Mont St. Joseph can get some positive score here and get into the end zone. Fake to Davis to look for the end zone, high arcing throw, leaping, oh, it's through the arms of Luke Pappas. The junior had it, and it went right through his hands and hit him in the helmet. It was a, just a jump ball out there. Pappas saw it the whole way, stopped, jumps, gets his both hands on the ball, goes right through his hands. It's just been that kind of night here for the Gales. When Mount St. Joseph's watched the replay of this game, there's gonna be a lot of, oh, man, oh my goodness. And they have moved the ball at times. As here's a quick look to the right side and an outstanding open field tackle there made. What a play by Ethan Boston. And quickly brought to the ground on that screen pass. So you get some of them young defenders from Spawning trying to make a name for themselves. Good play by Boston. So it's going to be third down and long. Clock ticking down here. Like to see Mount St. Joseph's get a score, get off this field with a touchdown. I think they're going to have to do it through the air. Let's see where they go. Zankowitz looking, high arcing for the end zone, nearly intercepted, unable to reel it in. There was Kari Wilson, who had a chance for the pick, and it's fourth down. And it looks like the Gales are going to bring in the kicking game to try to add three more here. Something positive on the board as the clock will tick inside three and a half minutes. I'm a little confused on this one. Field goal doesn't really give you anything other than maybe a practice for the future. I'm a little surprised here. Go for it. I don't know where the kicker <laughs> is right now. Adam King is out there to kicker, but the holder isn't there. And here he comes. The holder is on the move racing in in Greg Roman. I don't know if he had his helmet. He probably didn't think they were gonna go for the kick either. He wanted to go for the score. Maybe it's a fake. We had a Thurman Thomas situation right there. For they the, ran out of time. Yeah, from the Super Bowl way back in the day. <laughs> the, the skins and the bills as there's an offside. It's a, or check that, excuse me, delay of game. Bring Zankowitz back on the field and go for the touchdown. Yeah, it'll that give. Would, that would give you something to look forward to. This makes Adam King work a little bit harder as it's gonna be about a 38 yard field goal from straight away between the hashes. Now let's see King with a right foot. His longest kick last week was a 30 yarder. The kick is up, low liner and no good. Wide to the left. I just don't understand that at all. You're down 42 to three, you have nothing to lose, go for it. So the clock is on the move inside two minutes. It had the distance, but it just went wide to the left. Now into the game now, Blake Howell, the sophomore quarterback. Malik Washington calls it a night. He put together a highlight film. We saw him running the football and throwing darts. Fun player to watch as a whistle on the field. And we may have had a timeout or a whistle on the field. Maybe an illegal substitution against Mount St. Joe. It's going to be a five yard penalty against the Gales, and the clock continues to move here. Now we're only a few snaps away 
from the end of this what has been a statement game from Spalding. Archbishop Spalding, statement game. They're the number one seed, they earned it. And look at this carry up the middle. First down and more, a great run carry from right August Stott. August. So Stout with a run right up the middle. And it's good, you get some of the seniors that haven't played, get them some touches, let them feel the game a little bit. I no like doubt that. about it. Inside a minute to play. Archbishop Spalding is gonna finish the regular season eight and two, but six and oh in MIAA play. As Stout hands it off again, or Stout takes the handoff from the new quarterback in Blake Howell. And the clock's still on the move. I don't know if they have to snap it again. I think they're gonna get one more crack at it with a clock on the move. Somebody wants to feel the rock. <laughs> and there's the handoff to the big fella. That's taking it up the middle is Liam McNamara. And that's gonna do it. The clock's gonna tick away. And Archbishop Spalding on their senior day has sealed up the number one seed in the upcoming MIAA championship tournament. And they do it in resounding fashion all over Mount St. Joseph tonight, 42 to three. When that score goes out, everybody's gonna have to look, their, their eyebrows are gonna pick up. I think everybody thought this was gonna be a close game. It had the makings of the two good quarterbacks. Spalding came out, first minute in play, they got the block. Uh, punt scored, a never let up from there. 42 to three, statement game for Spalding. So that will do it for us. 42 to three is the final score. The postseason is ahead. Spalding, the one seed, Mount St. Joseph, they will be the two seed in the upcoming MIAA tournament. For Greg Sir, my name is Adam Pohl. So great to be with you today as we see some of the great highlights of this one, including a long touchdown pass there from Washington. Again, our final score. Archbishop Spalding 42, Mount St. Joseph 3. Thank you for being with us this evening.